All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for taking time out of your life to spend uh, some time with us to hear about the work that we've been doing here now for a while that we want to share with you. And we are really looking for your input. Uh, this isn't uh, just all our decision, obviously. We don't want to uh, cause any problems for anybody on island. That's the last thing that we want to do. We want to help everybody. We want to be a part of everybody's life and work together on these things. So no upfront, not one of us uh, is trying to do this on our own. We're trying to work together, trying to help all of our fellow islanders with what we believe is a, a very important need in so many ways. And we're going to talk about that tonight. So again, thanks for taking time to be here. Thanks for taking time to listen to me. And we'll look forward to talking at the end here together to get your ideas, viewpoints, and yeah, yes and no's and all those kinds of things that are so important during this process. I'm going to start off by saying uh, that it is a long process. This isn't something that's going to happen overnight. Uh, I know in speaking with a few of you that some of you recognize you may not be here by the time something like this gets accomplished. I would hope that you are, and I would hope that it would actually happen quicker than that. But as we know, the big wheels of government don't always move that fast. And that's how we have to go about this. So the agenda for tonight's meeting, Zoom meeting tips and etiquette, we've already done that, Entered up, introduced public doc advisory committee. Uh, we're going to take a look at that presentation of committee actions and findings to date, a quick poll of attendees. So we're going to want you to, to participate in that. Uh, a reminder of Zoom tips and etiquette again, and community discussion, comments, questions, and input. So there's the agenda. So a little background on this project is in order. Ferry outages highlight a lack of safe boat access to get people on and off island. I don't know how many of you rode on my boat, rode on Rob's boat and others during some of these ferry outages, but it's obvious that we are lacking in that area of being able to get back and forth to the mainland when there's a ferry outage. Laika was asked to form an advisory committee to evaluate existing and potential alternatives. Now, Whatcom County Parks and Recreation have been receptive. And when we approach them, they explain that there are opportunities that may exist to fund a project like this. Obviously, it's a lot of money. And they suggested steps of how to proceed and research the public dock options. And that's why we're pursuing it through Whatcom County Parks. Every other pathway from my perspective, uh, has been closed or made impossible to actually get anything done through. So we've kind of picked the path of least resistance. And anytime a government agency invites you, that might be a good thing. And so that's kind of why we're, we're sticking with this and proximity. We'll talk more about that. Anyways, uh, the committee has met weekly since September 2021 to identify the current situation and research existing options. We've been working very hard on that. To outline project goals and potential benefits in every way that we could imagine, and hopefully you may have some more. We have sought to draft a design concept and suggested features that we think will fit the island need well. And obviously we want your input on that. We have been collecting input from those affected by lack of boat access. A lot of you have had not only minor inconveniences, you've had some serious inconveniences and difficulties as well. Uh, we've also uh, have tried to determine how to share plans and solicit ideas from islanders. The folks on the committee have done a wonderful job at putting together uh, means of, of getting your input. And we want to improve on that. We're nowhere close to being done or close to having all of our, you know what, together. This is a process and you're definitely a big part of that process and want your input. And finally, the committee has posted our goals, our agendas, our meeting videos and notes on a publicly accessible site. OurLemonyIsland.org has everything that we have done. There is an open invitation to all of you 
please take time to look at it. You can get a lot of information there that we don't have time to talk about all the things that we've looked at. There are things that we looked at early on that are no longer part of what we're doing. And those are different pathways that we've given up on for various reasons, but you can, you can see the whole progress from the very beginning until this very night. And even after the presentation tonight, there will be stuff available for you to see from tonight as well. So some key questions that we're going to consider uh, what we have looked at. What is the current situation? What solution is proposed? And again, we're inviting you to, to be a part of that uh, solution. And then what might the solution look like? Some ideas that we've come up with. And again, you're invited to participate in that. The current situation as we know it, and you might be able to add to this, there's 900 plus residents with high seasonal variability, as we all understand and know, island life. 60 years at the current ferry has been in operation, been a wonderful boat, love it. There have been 18 days with uh, ferry service outages, planned and unplanned in 2021. And there's no publicly accessible docks on our island. Unlike all the other islands in the San Juans, for the most part, uh, we are without a means of a publicly accessible dock, obviously. So here's some interesting statistics to consider. If you look at the bottom line of all of the numbers, and this is from the Whatcom County website, this is not something that we came up with. This is from the ferry website. You can find it. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a link for it in the notes available after the presentation. But there's a lot of people coming on and off this island. And during a ferry outage, that really puts a burden on those who are willing to step up and try to help people get to where they got to get and do what they got to do. And I personally can testify about my boat. I hauled, I don't know how many hundreds uh, on that one major outage and, and many other times have I jumped in the boat and done it. Now, obviously I feel pretty blessed to get to do it. I enjoy being in the boat and doing those kind of things. So it's a lot of fun for me. Nonetheless, there, there's a need in our mind for a public dock for sure. So, the impact on people and businesses we have found out is a lot more than what I personally imagined, but you consider the delivery vehicles, the island day visitors that have been trapped, uh, the island residents themselves that have so many needs uh, that don't get met during those times, the public agencies and the, and the it, greater cost of them being trapped out here, the utility companies, island overnight visitors, uh, mainland companies that are on island that got stuck in their trucks, all of those really have a big impact on the people and businesses on the island. I'm sure you may have other examples in your own mind. So research on current access points. We have looked at everything. We considered everything that we could. If there's something missing out of here, let us know. But everything near the ferry terminal obviously is privately owned lands. And, and the, the families that we did talk to about it, that just wasn't going to be a viable option. And the reality is it's a lot more difficult to do things as private landowners than it is as a government organization. We looked at Aston Preserve. They're going to have some wonderful things down there. They have been uh, providing some park opportunities and the parks department is contributing to that situation down there. There's going to be some great things available. However, uh, there will not be a road that is open 24-7 to the public and it's a long ways away from uh, getting back and forth over to Gooseberry, which of course is the closest location. Village Point Marina, privately owned, a long ways around the island once again. I manage that marina. And though there's a potential to have a dock out there, it takes a lot of work to get it in and out. And of course, uh, we have no way to get it out of harm's way. And that's why it hasn't been out there in a couple of years because it got very damaged. Sunset Beach, Isle Air Beach, and all the other private beach accesses 
around the island all have bigger hurdles than what I think we should be able to or have to jump through. It's it's too difficult, too far away. The most logical location, obviously, in our mind is at the current park that is owned by Whatcom County Parks right in front of the Beach Store Cafe. And that's why we've kind of settled on that as being the most logical and reasonable place. And obviously, you see the picture there. Uh, not great way to load and unload people, especially people that have difficulties already on tripping hazards and, and needing help. It was a difficult time getting people up and down those rocks. And we definitely need something that's a little more safe for folks, especially during difficult situations. So what is the proposed solution? What does it look like? Well, Here's what we come up with. Establish a public dock on the island to first offer safe boat access for people with urgent need to get on and off island during ferry outages. To expand community opportunities for recreational boating. There's many of us on here that love boating and love being on the water. And it's difficult when you want to take people out. Uh, yeah, a lot of folks can jump up and down on the bows. My boat, obviously, you know, is a landing craft, so it makes it a little bit easier for most folks. But climbing up and down over the rocks just isn't practical, or climbing over the bow of a boat is not practical for a lot of people without a dock. We also in, want to enhance public access to waterfront activities, making it available for people of all uh, types to be able to enjoy the waterfront. And with a properly built dock, this will be available to everybody and anybody. And provide safe access for boaters with limited mobility. Definitely a, a big one on the list. Support alternatives for evacuation via boat. Right now, it's, again, scurrying over rocks, a landing craft, uh, very difficult. And a public dock would go a long ways in meeting that goal. So the project scope and terms, as we understand it, or what it would look like. A public dock would provide short-term docking, pickup and drop-off zones, and access to marine water activities, unlike we have now. A public dock addresses need for urgent access during ferry outages. And this would be borne out in so many different ways, not just with private boats, but in our vision, the foot passenger ferry would not have to wait for implementation of all the temporary docks at the ferry terminal. In our minds, they could pull right up to this dock and be able to use it. Now, whether the, the ferry department would do that or not, that's not our decision. We would just invite them to take advantage of it. And what we wanna emphasize is this is not a marina. It's, it's not going to be, in our vision, something designed for people to stay overnight. You don't tie your boat up, leave for the evening and come back. This is load and unload you know, drop off zones, pick up zones, pull up to the dock, get loaded, get unloaded, and then get off the dock. And this model works. There's many places in the San Juans where this is the case. There is no uh, overnight mooring. It's just tie up, take care of your business, then get back on your boat. Doesn't stop people from anchoring or potentially having mooring balls out in that area. If that's what the parks department decides to do, and they can tie their dinghy up there, but their motor vessels definitely will not be allowed to tie up. At least that would be our vision for sure. So emergency versus urgent access. We felt the need to really define this a little more clearly. Medical emergency access scenarios, as an example, there is no current ability for vessels to land safely and transport patients without high risk maneuvers. When a fire boat comes to the island, there is no dock and they cannot load all year round. And if you have ever been loaded on a boat over the bow, you could imagine the difficulties that that would present, especially if you were strapped to a backboard or if you were in need of emergency medical services, that's, that's just not the best way to do it. It's possible the fire department can do it, 
but boy, it's a much higher risk maneuver than having a dock available to load. Future ferry terminal will have access, but not for public use. This has been agreed to by the Public Works Department. They have committed to putting in deployable emergency docks at the ferry terminal. But any of you that have followed LIFAC understand that at the earliest, at the very earliest that we're going to see anything like this would be 2029. Uh, so it's a long ways out and it's probably going to be longer than that from my per personal perspective. So urgent access scenarios for public use, not life-threatening, but important. Medical appointments, time-sensitive reservations, travel plans, et cetera. And I know many of the people I hauled on the boat had many of these things that they needed to get to. Uh, you know, losing your airfare because you can't make it to the plane. That, that's a real bummer. And if we could have a better way of loading people, that would help mitigate some of those urgent needs. And it provides a, the shortest route for other emergency response vessels as well, including any county personnel that need to get over here for whatever reason. It's going to be much simpler for them as well. Here is the proposed site at the Parks and Rec property directly across the street from the Beach Store Cafe. Two pictures there showing you the red lines or the property lines approximate, pretty close. Uh, who owns what there? And the little blue circle indicates that parcel of land that the parks owns. And then of course the current platform that some of you have been on. Uh, I'm amazed at how many Islanders have never actually walked on that platform, nor gone down the stairs that are located at the top of the picture where Nick's got the little arrow right now that take you down to a very small beach. I know that in speaking with some of the locals, part of the concern is people going to that beach, going beyond the borders of the parks and rec property. In our minds, a pier and dock will mitigate that by drawing their attention to a more usable friendly area since the beach is so small. And we'll talk more about that, but that's the, that's the proposed site. Of course, it is in close proximity, the closest proximity to the docks on uh, Gooseberry side. And you can see at a, 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 a what, what tide is this? I think it says somewhere. A seven foot, I think, tide or so is what this picture is representing. You can see there's not much beach there for public use. The pier will make it much better than that. So beach access, the park stairs at low tide, you can see that. Visitors need to scramble over slippery rocks to reach the water. I did pull in there twice during hauling people. And both times there were folks that needed to be assisted to be able to safely walk to that set of stairs. So again, without a dock, it's much more difficult to get on and off the island. So we have called all the neighbors in close proximity to the dock to the north and to the south. I believe that I contacted everyone and I believe I've spoken with everyone. If I've missed anybody, please let me know. Uh, but obviously the neighbors are our greatest concern. Whereas the parks department don't have staff out here. Whatever we wind up getting, there is going to be direct um, community need to maintain, to help with, to support, and to police our public dock. One of the things that I want to emphasize is that I feel that I'm going to have ownership of this, unlike how I do now. If, if I have any responsibility for it, I'm going to be looking out for my neighbors to the north and south, telling people, hey, there's a property line here. I've told some of those that I've called, I will build signs. I will do whatever I have to. If the parks department doesn't want to do it, and I think they, do, they will, but if they do it, I would put up signs for you. And I guarantee you, if I'm down there, I'm going to keep people from trespassing on any neighbor's property because it's important to me that you guys, as my neighbors, feel that you're cared for as much as I care for my own property. 
property. And I know everybody on the committee would, would agree with that, that we would all look out for our neighbors. And I think everybody on island wants to look out for one another. So that's, that's what I'm going to count on to help mitigate any potential problems. So here is the site of the dock from the early 1920s to somewhere in the mid 80s. Some of you have enjoyed that dock. I love hearing stories about people who have enjoyed the old dock and, and many of you were saddened that they tore it down. And there's a whole story in and of itself to it. But the proposed site is basically the same path as the old dock that was there. Part of the benefit to that is that we will be able to uh, protect the environment better by either removing more of the uh, creosote poles that have been broken off and re remain in the muck down there, or be able to cap some of them and stop the leaching of the, the, the nastiness out of those logs that are full of creosote in the bay. And I know that they're there. I'm a diver. I've dove there very many times. And so I tell you, there's still a lot of, a lot of debris down there, but that would be the proposed sites. So public safety benefits provide safe small boat access on and off the island, obviously, enhance access for fire boats, boat ambulance, et cetera. That's a huge one. It support additional egress in case of evacuation which you know we have no other way of really dealing with it. If you've got your own boat, great, but getting more people off during that type of time, this would be important. Provide an alternative dock for a temporary passenger ferry as well. I think that's a big one. And if the county's willing to, to use that, that's gonna be a huge benefit. Expand boat access to reach Bellingham when peninsula floods as well. And obviously, I know some of you are saying, yeah, but if the weather is bad, which often is, we're not going to be able to use it. You are absolutely right. But anything's better than what we have right now. And I understand that I can't always go out on the boat, but having that as an opportunity is, is really important to me anyways. And I think many of you as well. So desirable safety features, accessible by boaters with a range of abilities. Those that are wheelchair bound, here we go. We want to make sure that they have access. Uh, and we want it to be during any tide. And obviously, that's part of the requirements of any public dock is that people will be able to safely get on and off and be able to use it at any tide level and provide access without the need to climb over a steep riprap and the possibility of, of the damage that can happen there. We have such a wonderful ferry crew. We have such wonderful islanders during the outage. Every ferry crew member was down on the rocks helping people. Neighbors were helping neighbors. It was just a wonderful experience in that sense. And just love working with all of you during those times. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So more considerations in regards to recreation benefits. It'll broaden the range of water-based activities for folks. Family-friendly site for fishing and crabbing, unlike that we have now. Uh, this, I believe, will keep trespassers from going on people's property and fishing off their rocks. They're going to have a better location to do it. It'll provide access for kayaks, paddle boards, et cetera, that people enjoy. And it'll provide access for visitors to attend Saturday market, for example, artist tours, et cetera. Uh, the dock, once again, is not a marina, would not allow overnight stays. And docking would be limited to a few hours for loading and unloading, once again. And this is going to be a great benefit to, to everyone on island in regards to their businesses, and especially during those times. So some of the desirable recreational features would be short-term tie-ups for boats in a dinghy zone. They'd get to stay a little bit longer so they could get out to their boats, place for fishing and crabbing, and easy access for kayaks, paddle boards, et cetera. Whatever you enjoy out on the water, here's a great place to do it. And I know some of you might be saying in your mind right now, oh, that's so dangerous being so close to the ferry. Well, if you've ever been down to the Edmonds Ferry or if you've ever been down to Muckleteal Ferry, they have marine underwater parks right next door and tons and tons of people doing these same activities in close proximity to the state ferries. It can be done safely. And it does work elsewhere. So it could work here as well. So more potential uses for public dock provide easy access for marine research. I know that out in the San Juans, there are different public docks that are used by universities to uh, conduct experiments and do studies. 
expand opportunities for wildlife viewing and photography, uh, offer a place for radio controlled hobbyists, maybe, who knows, all sorts of opportunities. Environmental benefits. Obviously the project must comply with Whatcom County shoreline master program. Thankfully, the proposed site is in an area that is low on the scale of critical saltwater areas. I've spoken with the DNR. I've spoken with uh, game people. I've spoken with uh, um, the environmental uh, agency that's responsible for spills and all this. And, and all of them uh, say that this area is an ideal area for limiting the impact of potential negative things. And, and with the cleaning up of the area being even of greater benefit, when they tore out that dock, they did not clean up well. Uh, I have seen with my own eyes the debris that's left down there. I know where there are batteries scattered about in the area. There is a lot of garbage down there that has never been dealt with. And this would provide an opportunity to really clean the area up. And thankfully, there's been uh, studies recently on so many levels because of the proximity of the ferry dock. And so we've got a lot of data available and it looks as the most promising area by far. So some of the desirable environmental features that we know would be good, removing or capping the old pilings containing creosote as I've already talked about, use fish friendly designs such as light penetrating deck surfacing. The DNR says they have uh, guidelines which they will help the parks department implement and to make it as environmentally friendly as possible. And it's designed to protect eelgrass and fish habitats, which again, all the studies point towards and could definitely be accomplished with just a little guidance and a little help. So input on dock design is what I wanna share with you now. The key design terms that you need to be familiar with, so we're all on the same page, is a pier built on fixed platforms sitting above the water as the old ferry dock had that you drove upon. A dock, which is an anchored uh, part of the structure to land or pier with pilings or anchors floating on the water. And then the gangway, which connects the pier to the dock so in our case with the ferry terminal, for example, the pier is what we drive on. The ramp that goes up and down is the gangway. And just as an example, the ferry is that floating dock, right? Uh, and then an L, an extension of pier that provides additional watercraft tie up, often in a T shape or L shape. Those of you that have been to other docks, you're familiar with that. And they're not necessarily going to be those, but potentially that could happen. Next, Nick. So some of the key designs that we are looking for is obviously to locate deep enough water that the float does not rest on bottom, even at a low tide. That's a requirement of the DNR. Designed for longevity to endure impact of waves, storms, and wakes from boats, right? The dock surface could be a great design to allow water to ride up and through the openings. Uh, aluminum or steel likely to survive better than solid wood or concrete, just as the new uh, ferry dock improvements have gone to steel, whether it be galvanized or some other plating that's environmentally friendly and has a much better lifespan, obviously. So here is a picture of what we've kind of had envisioned. If you're looking at that superstructure going, well, that's really ugly. That was my thought too. This is not a final design by any means. And there's many ways to be able to raise and lower a dock. This is just one that happens to exist that a local company put together. It has the pier, it has the gangway, it has the dock. And off that dock, you can do an L, you can make it a T, you can put other ramps off there that would be seasonal, that you would be able to remove when not in use. And that final pullout spot and what to do with them, that's down the road. But this is the basic concept. And the idea is that that dock would remain 
available year round. And that's where the community participation is going to be important to be able to raise and lower that as we need it. Obviously, if any wind comes up, we want to get it up and out of harm's way. One of the problems over at Village Point Marina, which I manage, is that we're not able to rapidly remove that dock. And as a result, I wind up rebuilding it every couple of years because it gets blown apart by the waves. And it's not going to be any different on the east side. It potentially is even worse at times. So it's got to be, in our mind, something that we can raise and lower, big enough that the passenger ferry can tie up to as well. Next. So you see a couple examples here of what we're talking about. East Sound on Orcas Island, San Juan County, Fishing Bay has a pier that extends past the gangway to provide platform access. Uh, Stewart Island Marine State Park, San Juan County, once again, uh, pier is stepped down and ends with a bump out platform. A gangway connects to a floating dock with a dinghy tie up. Those are some different ways that we can look at it. So. Our next actions, the next steps that we intend on taking. Well, we're gonna to continue to publicize committee progress and draft presentations to the community. We uh, want to provide additional community surveys to collect input. This is of the greatest importance to us. Again, we're not trying to be lone rangers here. We want your input and direction and help and figuring out how we can best benefit all in our community. And this is, you know, this is a legacy that we're going to leave for generations to come if we're able to accomplish it and see it come to fruition. We are going to continue to research potential sources of funding and grants for uh, getting this project done. Revise our presentation based upon your feedback is another step that we want to take. And ultimately, we are going to make a presentation, hopefully, to Whatcom County Parks and Recreation based upon a collective of ideas and thoughts that you guys are going to provide and that we need help with. So thank you so much again for coming and, and being a part of this so that we can get your input. You can go to ourlummyisland.org and stay up to date on everything that we've covered tonight. This presentation will be available as soon as uh, we are done here tonight and along with a bunch of extra notes as well. So watch for committee news announcements as well on Nextdoor Lummy Island, on Facebook, on ourlummyisland.org. Provide input on solutions and features you want. We are seeking that. We want to hear from you. We invite you to do that. Uh, we want to engage in discussions about these things. We want you to share perspectives. Uh, if you're a vendor, if you're an artist, if you're a business owner, I've talked to many of you already. We want you to write a letter to us, uh, something that will give us input into how you're thinking about this and how it can benefit you. Or if it is going to be a negative, we want to know why you think it's going to be a negative and how we can work together with you to, to, to mitigate that or to make it better. Is there a possibility for that? We really want to work together with you. And we want to invite you to join the Public Dock Advisory Committee. There's room for more. We want you to be a part of what's going on. And if you have the time and you want to make the time to, to join with us in refining and making this a, a better deal for all, we'd love to have you. Mary, I believe I'm going to give it over to you now. Thank you all for listening to me. I look forward to engaging with you here shortly. Mary? Okay. Um, I've got a quick poll that I'm going to ask people to um, take. And I, and I just, I also want to take this opportunity to actually really truly introduce um, the people that are on this committee. So um, besides Chris and myself, um, we have Alan Crum. Can you say hi, Alan? <laughs> Okay, and Dave Perry. Hello, everyone. Yep, and Nick Kluge. Hello. Yeah, and uh, 
most important person that's been doing a lot of stuff for us is uh, Lane Corey, who's the very new on the island, but she has stepped in here after living here for only six weeks and has been an awesome recorder secretary. Has She has been the driving force of getting our slide presentations done. So awesome. Say hi, Lane. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Hi, everybody. Yeah. And so what we have right now is I have a short little poll that I'm going to take. It has, just has three questions. It's very simple. And um, I'm going to launch it right now. And you sh it should come up on your screen if this is working right. And people seeing it? OK, so the questions are, do you currently have a boat? Yes or no? Have you used your private boat to cross during an outage? Yes or no? And the last one is, have, um, if, have you ever been transported across during an outage? And it's yes and no. So that's the third question. And we'll take a little bit of time right now to just answer that. And during the, during the presentation, I was watching, there was lots of good questions that have come up during that presentation. So um, uh, I think that Lane has probably captured those. I've seen a lot of them coming up. So we've got 27 people that have answered so far. Okay, looks like we've got 27 out of 27, 100% of you have answered. So, okay, so just going through this real quickly. Anyone still trying to take the poll? I'll go ahead and share results with everybody. So, do you currently have a boat? Uh, we've got 12 out of 27, so 44% of the people here tonight do have a boat, and 56% uh, of, of the people do not. And um, have you used your private boat to cross during an outage? 11% uh, of people have, and 67% have not, and uh, people that don't have a boat, 22% uh, of them. <laughs> Haven't haven't uh, that's that that's what we've got there. Yep. And then have you been transported across on someone else's private boat during an outage? 19% uh, of the people have, and 18% of the people haven't. Oh, 81%. Yes, I'm sorry. So that's interesting. And thank you for participating in that. That just kind of helps us kind of set the pace for. Uh, who our group? Who is um, in our group tonight? So, um, so what I'm going? To... Yeah, Mary. What happened with the questions? Is it looks like they came to you, and I didn't get to see them. So oh, we'll really? Through, we'll go through okay. first, and if you um, if you read out the question, then Chris can uh, answer, or call in one of us to answer. Okay. Okay, all right, I will read out the questions. It looks like they all came to me in the chat. Okay, so this is like a technical, <laughs> technical, this, yeah, we're, we're still learning to this. Okay, so I'm gonna go through some of the questions that were asked online during the chat. So um, 
And so I have a comment here. I believe that the tidelands both north and south of this site are public according to the Whatcom County website. And that was uh, from Elizabeth Kilinowski. So uh, Elizabeth, do you have any uh, thing to say further on that? And okay, uh, next one came from Lisa Wokus. And how do you propose to fund the public dock? Chris? Yeah, that's where the Parks Department actually have funds available. And there are many grants available and different avenues that will potentially be available to make something like this happen. The government is very interested in anything that will provide uh, financial benefit to uh, all of the community, the public benefit to all, and they have funds designated just for those types of purposes. And so uh, there's quite a bit of money out there available, and that's what we'll be researching more as well. And we're kind of waiting for direction from the Parks Department when we get to that point as well as how we can contribute as a community towards something like this. Uh, you know, I, I know personally, I'm willing to put in money into something like this, but how that all works with the Parks Department, I don't know. I just know that they're inviting us, so that's why we're pursuing it that way. Okay. Very expensive though, definitely a lot of money. Yeah. And there also are um, grants that are available, like boating infrastructure grants and stuff like that, that we are um, researching as well. One thing I do want to mention is, in my mind, and I've told this to everyone on the committee, that I am not in uh, uh, support of any type of taxation in any way, shape, or form above what we already have now. I pay a lot in taxes on my house and I do not want to pay any more through any other means of what they're already getting it. So that's my personal preference, but I would not be in support of any type of extra taxation, just so you know. Hey, Chris, can I add something here? Please, Dave. So uh, we did some research on the boating infrastructure grant and other grant options that are available to us. And I, <laughs> I found this very interesting and I think probably many of you all know this, but uh, I did not know the, a little bit of this history, but when you buy gasoline at the pump, you're paying gas taxes that go to support highways, right? When you buy fuel for your boat, you're paying those same taxes, but you're not getting that benefit of using the highways. So uh, in the early 60s, I think it was 64, uh, this bill was put to Washington State voters that actually that was approved, and those tax dollars that go towards road funding, some of that money is now redirected to projects like this for marine activities specifically. And those are the funds that are available both at the state level and then for you know, different classifications at the federal level. So it gets complex. We've done a little bit of research into this, but we think the money is there and, and the Parks Department is the one that would actually uh, submit these grants and push those through the, the process. Another, another um, question that I have here is how would you coordinate funding raising, act oh, funding raising actions for the public doc so as to not compete with the county's fund funding raising efforts for a ferry, a new ferry and ferry docks? And speaking with the parks department, they have their own separate funds completely. They have their own budgets that in no way compete with those other funds. As, as far as I understand it, I could be corrected here. If anybody knows more, feel free to jump in. Okay. I, went, I could add, Chris, that these, these grants, these infrastructure grants for, specifically for boating activities are specifically for non-commercial activities, non-commercial facilities. So. I see this as a great way for all of us to recapture some tax money we've already given in on our fuel taxes and put to something that benefits us directly. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Another question I have is two questions. Number one, 
what is planned for the gooseberry side. And Chris, you want to answer that? So in my con yeah, in my conversations with the gentlemen or gentlemen that run the fuel dock over there, they invite us to use the dock. They want us to buy their gas. The only time that they don't want us to interfere is when they have an opener. And they only ask then that we wait until the rush of their boats gets taken care of and then we're able to help again. So there was an opener during the time that I was transporting people. And instead of tying up to the dock with my boat, I was able to go to the beach right next to the boat ramp over there. They asked for $5 for people who are not buying gas to land on the beach or land on the dock. Uh, very reasonable, but they've been nothing but inviting towards us and saying, yeah, we would love to have you guys use it. Uh, so in my experience, though subjective, it's always been a positive with them. Never had any negatives, as I pointed out. And, and one thing I would like to point out is that the only time that we would be that, you know, the, the public dock would be being used for transporting people over to Gooseberry would be during a ferry outage in the interim time between when uh, the chief breaks down and the passenger ferry can be deployed, or if it's one of those other typical ones where it's out and they're not going to deploy it, at least people still could return home and, you know, or get over to town for a medical urgency or whatever. So it's not like we're trying to create extra infrastructure on the gooseberry side. Um, so far the, uh, I, my experience with, with that is uh, even, we had a long, a long time ago uh, when I first was here, probably about 2009, uh, we had a, a major breakdown of the ferry. That was the only other time in my 19 years living here that we've had, they had to get a, the passenger ferry going. And um, even in those days, they, it was um, several people went together to get a landing craft and uh, to rent a landing craft to come up out of Anacortes to transport vehicles across because that was you know, that was just really tough in the middle of summer and people had having to go to work. And so Islanders just did that on their own. And um, and we got permission to land at the at the at the at the on the res and it was not a, a big deal. Okay. Oh, and I'm still muting people. I need to unmute people. I gotta uh, let me hit that on my security screen. Bad thing, Mary. <laughs> okay. Um, so I can't, okay, I've got, I, 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 people should be able to unmute themselves now. Thank you for the comments and saying that to me. So um, my goof, my goof up. Um, uh, let's see. Mary, none of us can speak. Oh, oh, yes, okay, you can you can speak now. Uh, I asked both Chris and Nick if they were putting their presentation on Leica's website. Uh, yes, this presentation will be available on the website along with notes. Um, so it will be there on the website um, probably after the meeting tonight. Actually, it already is. Oh, it actually, it already is. Um, so it'll be on the public doc community uh, committee's website. Mm -hmm. Web page. But, but what about the comments, Alan? That Mary just said the comments will um, be there. Mary is saving those comments. And yeah, the comments. And yeah. We'll, and we'll get those over there as well. Yeah, okay. The, uh, the, the another video question. Is, the video is being recorded as well, so this entire thing will be available. Yes, this whole thing will be available for playback. 
Okay. Um, I missed this. Would it be possible for someone to tie up the dock all day? Um, it, it, that would be pretty bad. I don't think it would. It would be. Uh, it would be possible, but it would be pretty frowned upon. And um, you know, but there are people out there that that do that do tie up and don't and go away. And maybe I don't know what we can do about that, but um, we wouldn't welcome them back anymore. <laughs> Uh, anyone else have a comment on that one? We would probably have signs on the dock. We've talked about that of just, you know, two hour or three hour time limit. And uh, if it if it becomes awful, it's things. Okay, the second question about regarding access and parking, and that's uh, Anne. Um, thank you. I missed it. The I missed it. The other one. Who is going to monitor usage to make sure the short-term requirements are complied with? And um, Chris, you want to talk about that one? And um, the other one is uh, yeah, the question of, of on both, on both parking. Levels. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. So on both levels, it's good. Can you hear me? Are you guys able to hear me right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, no, hello, did I lose connection? Okay, you are hearing me, okay. So on both levels, okay. participation is Chris. key to how that all looks. You're breaking up, Chris. If everyone can. In re reality, so. eventually. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I missed that. I'm going to mute everybody for a minute, Chris. Did I freeze? Speak. Yeah. Oh, sorry, folks. I'll keep trying here. Okay. Chris, you need to unmute. Chris, unmute yourself. Oh, dear. I don't think Chris can hear us anymore. OK. But uh, I think what he was trying to get across was that it's going to be a community uh, operated dock. It's going to be on. The community to now? facilitate. There you are. I can hear you. All right. Well, I'll try again. So the parking area is the existing ferry terminal parking lot. Also, the parks department has a designated area in the beach store cafe parking lot. I have not been able to confirm with the owners of that property what agreement they have or don't have with the parks department. I'm just expressing what it says. And obviously, uh, the folks that are coming in by boat that are not islanders aren't going to add any parking traffic. And the locals know how it works around here. So I'm confident they will figure out how to park without being uh, obtrusive or rude to their neighbors. And as Islanders go, they will be reminded rapidly if they get it wrong. So, you know, that's just kind of self-policing on all of our parts from my perspective. Does that answer everyone's question, I hope? Uh, not really, because I think the other night, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go that ahead. was my question. So maybe I could just expand on it. So it was two parts, one is parking. Uh, the other one is access. There's, you know, fear of distance and living right on that section of the road. I know what it's like. 
there's no easy, safe place for people to walk along the road. Um, there's a, a corner there that people travel around pretty fast by the beach store cafe. So how are people going to get from the ferry dock safely to the, um, the new ferry dock, yours, to the ferry parking, which is a fair distance away? I'm just worried yeah, so about safety. Gotcha. Yeah, and in my discussion with some of the neighbors around there, it, one of the things that we discussed it is an improvement of the side of the road. From what I understand is that bank along there is sloughing off anyways, and something needs to be done to improve upon that. That would be a prime time for the parks department to come along and help those who own adjoining property from it being washed away anymore and actually providing a safe way around that corner. You're absolutely right. Just today, a family of six uh, adults and their kids walking around that corner and the kids were walking out in the road and people were whipping around that corner. So I know exactly what you're talking about. I think this is an opportunity to actually improve the safety over there by using the, the right of way along the road to enhance the bank and to make it safer. That would be my way of mitigating it, but open to ideas for sure. Um, let me add on to that for just a second. Uh, when we were looking at the um, plat map of the, how the properties are divided up, you've got the uh, beach store cafe, and then you've got the houses that are directly adjacent to it. Then there's a large piece of land and then there's the county of uh, the overflow parking lot as it turns out that large piece of land be that is between the current overflow parking area and the next house is also county property and there also happens to be a walking path behind the bushes there so there is there is possibly opportunity to fix walking along the road on that side or the other side. It just would be a matter of crossing the street. But uh, I think there are opportunities that, that can be explored to, to remove the problems or mitigate them. Okay, all right. Um, anything else, Ann? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, okay, and a comment here uh, from Debbie. Community monitoring is fine, but pretty useless for day visitors. Okay, good comment there. And Debbie, do you want to say anything more about that? Nope. Okay. So, Mary, uh, in response to that, at, at the LICA meeting, uh, I had a, a question to Chris, and Chris said he was going to be the one that was going to be responsible for making sure that people weren't there too long at, at that dock. And, I, somehow I just don't think that's I gotta wonder about that. Anyway, yeah, um, let me let me maybe let Chris, me clarify. Chris would like to clarify that. Yeah, I will clarify. If I'm down there and I am doing something, obviously I'm not gonna live down there and monitor the thing, but if along with me, other community members who take ownership of everything on island, looking out for our neighbors are there. We're, we're all going to do it. I'm definitely going to do it. I do it now. I mean, I pull people over when they're speeding down the road and being stupid. So I will get in people's faces when it's necessary. And, and uh, I try to do it nice and calmly, but nonetheless, you know, I care about everyone out here and, and uh, definitely going to take up the cause to make it beneficial to everybody. Will I do it perfectly? Absolutely not. Will I live down there? Absolutely not. I just want to be sure that people don't understand that you are going to be in charge. No, no, so, totally. It is, That's it not is what I was saying at all. Never, okay. from, never been said from day one. It is a community effort. And it is as much a community effort as parks and recreation determines. It's just like our relationship with the 
public works and maintaining the park. There is an, a letter of a understanding and agreement that we do that. There would be have to be something similar for parks and recreation. Okay, I think that was a little different than what was presented before. Mr. Hall, Actually, you have something there, to say. Uh, wait, there, wait, there's wait. There's a simple wait, solution. Wait, wait. Uh, there is a hand up from Ryan Yeager. It's been up a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, Ryan. yeah, I'm uh, Ryan Yeager. We actually own the adjacent property, those two cabins. My family's owned them for 70 plus years. Thanks and for being this here. is going to impact our property probably more so than anybody else on the island. And ever since those stairs have been installed years ago up in that same location, we've had a huge uptick in vandalism, uh, break ins on our cabins. Um, We've had numerous people who we spend the summers there and it, it turns into a bathroom underneath our cabin there um, from that public access. We have toilet paper. I mean, I witness it, you know, all the time right there. And I'm just worried that it's going to invite a lot more of that kind of no. impacts and building fires we've had them build fires under the cabin during some months and it's just we're we're, we're scared to lose those cabins and those are you know to me they're a historical uh property on the island and i just it, it's it kind of really worrisome where this is going to be located you know it, to, to my family and myself so i just was wondering is there any uh thoughts of bathrooms or any other public uh restrooms around there that people could use because right now it seems like <laughs> our, our our cabins are being used as a public toilet on that beach right now yeah ryan thank you so much i enjoyed talking with one of your family members about this very issue and and in my mind how we mitigate that is what we've already been discussing is the ownership that we have as islanders of something that we all need to be a part of to take care of fellow Islanders. And if I saw someone over uh, at your place or uh, someone else saw someone over at your place trespassing or definitely trying to use it as a toilet, I mean, at that time, I'm going to speak up and say, what are you doing? I offered your family, uh, I would personally put up signs, no trespassing. Right now, I don't see any signs that were put there by the county on your behalf. I can't imagine why they didn't. That's you know not not our position to to do that. Uh, but boy, I'm going to look out for you in that. And yeah, yes, we've, I would love we've put some that. signs up, and they've been removed over the years too. Um, sure. And like I said, we've had some family heirlooms stolen out of the cabin. They break into those cabins quite often, and it's just it's uh, I don't know. I just. And, then, and also another uh, concern would be the noise. We, we stay in those cabins, we live there, we sleep in them in the summer months. And if mm -hmm. there's a aluminum gangway, just the, the, the noise of every time the ferry comes in, banging and clanging, I just, I don't know if that's been brought up at all in any of the discussions with the noise of a aluminum dock or aluminum gangways. Um, and and also lighting too. I'm sure it's going to be lighted. Is, is that has that been uh, brought up in any of the planning? Having the uh, light pollution potentially, uh, you know, if it's going to have 24 hour lighting for security in the in the evenings and nights. Um, just a few of those kind of concerns also. Yeah, those wonderful, all, Ryan. Those are, those are all things that we definitely will keep in mind as we move through this. Uh, I would like to find a way to ease all of those concerns and i think there are practical ways to do most of it obviously the the noise level that is the great one that we i don't know the of ways of making that less would definitely be top on my list and that's what we present ultimately party for for ultimate design parameters and how that all looks. But those are definitely things that we would present to them on your behalf and anybody else who's really concerned about those things and rightly so. We definitely wanna work through those things with you. So thanks for sharing those thoughts with us. Yeah, Ryan, do you have any other comments? 
Uh, no, not as of right now. I just, um, I'm kind of just getting up to speed on this. My, actually my folks are the ones that own the property and they've been trying to stay up on this. I'm fairly new to this whole, um, uh, plan. I think it's a great idea. It's definitely needed on the island. I do see that. I, I, my biggest concern is just getting a little bit more educated on what's going on and, and, uh, and, trying to get up to speed. And like I said, I think it's a great idea. It's just uh, a few things that I, you know, have some big concerns with. So yeah, um, I'm definitely learning a lot here on this. So I appreciate you guys. Okay. I, I would personally. Thanks know, for being here, Ryan. Really appreciate yeah, it. Say, we appreciate it greatly, your comments, uh, because the your, your comment about the sound, uh, not something that had come to my mind. But uh, if you have the time and the will, you would be a wonderful member of the committee as a stakeholder. Yeah. <laughs> sure, I, I would I would love to be a part of it for sure. Great. Can I plan on retiring soon and that's where I plan on retiring is right there. So <laughs> that's, a, it's been a- you have a huge stake. <laughs> yep, yep, definitely. And we, like I said, we've had five generations there and, and my kids and hopefully grandkids and everybody will get the chance to enjoy that. So, um, oh, Ryan, yeah, I, I'm definitely invested in this. So I would I'd be a part of any committee if you guys would would welcome me in for sure. Well, yeah, Ryan, you're, you're, you're going to need a place to bring in your boat. <laughs> okay, You'll need a place to bring in your boat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> We will, we will definitely make that happen. Okay, Debbie, um, can you, uh, can you unmute now? I, I've, it's, I've, I've reopened, so you should be able to unmute if you still have um, a need to say anything more. Uh, um, I don't have a need to say anything more. I just, um, I think particularly given those last concerns that the whole issue of monitoring how this is used, I think is a very open point. I personally am not comfortable going up to big boaters and saying, you, know, you can't pee there or whatever. You know, I think citizen, I'm, I'm all for community monitoring, but it's when you're open to a larger public, I think it's very complicated. I'm not arguing against this at all. I'm just saying that this is a concern that's come up that I think really has to be thought through carefully. Um, so yeah, thank you, Debbie. I know one of the ways that uh, they deal with it, like out at uh, 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 Susha Island in the state park there is they have dock hosts, people that actually volunteer their time to uh, monitor the dock. And, and maybe we wind up having something like that. I don't know. In my mind, that's something down the road, but that is definitely something I would consider that we could implement and make happen. I think we're all concerned about that um, because uh, we've already recognized that it is a, that it is a potential issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I am. Mr. Hall, we, 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 Mr. Hall was going to say something, right? Okay. Well, it seems to me public dock, public parking, you can kind of, with the technology we have today, you put a camera that faces down on the dock and when you get off that boat, you go on up to the little stanchion, you pay your little fee for being tied on up per hour, just like a parking meter. Not rocket science. We got the tech to do that. Now you got a camera that's monitoring the boat. Where'd the boat owner go? Been left alone for a long time. They're causing a ruckus, whatever. You know who it is. Okay. And there's another question here. Uh, would the public dock be functional during winter storm months? And um, so with the design that you see, um, that we are trying to push for something that can be quickly deployed 
but you would not be able to um, use the dock during a storm. And so, no, that 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 that's a, a big no, I think. Um, but it could be deployed during the winter in in good weather, and it it would increase our ability to get people across to the mainland in the event of a ferry outage. But I do not think that it would ever be used um, during a storm. And when the ferry, if the ferry can't run, a little boat's not going to make it across there either. So I think that's that's a an answer for that. Anyone else have a comment on that? Okay. Uh, Mary, I, I just have a question. Uh, this whole thing started because uh, you guys needed an emergency exit from the island. And it has something to me, it's all about reliability of the ferry. I know that I know that ferries out, you know, every, supposedly every other month for what I call ferry fix it day. And we and we know that there's dry dock, but isn't that really where this whole thing started? Was that it was unreliability about the ferry. And is am I did I miss something? Thanks. It, it's not just a question of, or uh, it's not promoted only due to unreliability, but also the need for a system of redundancy. Um, even after the ferry gets replaced, it's it's not going to be 100% reliable. It's going to be that, breaking right? down. Yeah, you're right. So we, right. we need to have multiple methods to get onto and off of the island. Uh, MJ is is absolutely correct in that it originally started as the recognized need for being able to have another way to get off the island if there's an urgent need. And as the committee has grown, and you can see that from the minutes of the meetings and the videos, uh, it was determined that the best fix for this is having Parks and Recreation do a public dock. But yes, MJ, you are correct. It did, it, the initial impetus and request to LICA to form an advisory committee came because of the urgent need. And that urgent need was caused by failure. Thanks, Alex. So, uh, uh, thanks, Alan. And so, um, so we've been through this parks and recreation thing before before some of you got here. Uh, and so it seems like we might be going through that thing again. Is, am, I, am I wrong about that? Or I don't know, I'm just asking. No. I, don't, I don't really care. <laughs> MJ, I, I like to answer that because the Parks and Recreation Department that exists, Whatcom County Parks and Recreation has nothing to do with what was proposed here on the island. We're not trying to form any type okay. of- parks committee or anything like that we're not trying to gather any funds we're not looking to solicit from anybody on island we're looking for existing funds with an existing government agency whatcom county parks and recreation so nothing to do with islanders coming up with their own deal okay answer? very cool thank you uh -huh. and it looks like david parker has had his hand up for a while here um, okay thank you david david did you have a comment or a question you're going to have to unmute. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, you guys have asked for input from what I guess I'll call alternative viewpoints. Um, so maybe I'll be the first to take you up on that. Um, I have three comments. First, um, I guess I have a, a different perspective on the ferry outages of 2021, and it's really a glass half full perspective. There were only six unplanned mechanical outages last year. Um, three of them were of two hours or less in duration. One was about five and a half, and two were overnight. And so in the aggregate, those outages totaled about 62 hours if you only count the downtime against normal service hours of the, of the Watkins Chief. 
Um, in other words, the, the ferry was in service over 99% of the time it was supposed to be last year. And I think personally, that's really an exemplary record of service. I mean, the airlines don't do that. Amtrak doesn't do that. Um, I-5 doesn't do that. Um, and I think it's a real testament to the job that, that Rich Hudson and his team do with a 60 year old boat. And I, I don't think we, I, I think we need to keep that in mind. I also think based on comments that Richie's made to LIFAC, I think it's just as likely that that track record will improve next year as it is that it'll get worse because of changes they're making to their, their maintenance protocols. So that's my first comment. Um, the second is, um, Chris touched on this, but I, he didn't really emphasize it, but through sitting in on LIFAC meetings, Rich has talked about the commitment that uh, the county has, um, Public Works has to replacing the temporary docks that we use now during, mostly during dry dock, that takes six to eight hours to deploy with mechanical, some kind of mechanical retractable docks that as I understand it would be in the one to two hour time frame to get them in the water and allow the Sailor Sea to get over or another emergency boat. And I'm sure perspectives on this will vary, but my opinion is I see some huge advantages to, in terms of oversight, operation, maintenance, uh, probably safety and liability to having emergency access operate under the rubric of the county ferry service. Um, and that takes me off the hook, you know, in terms of getting out there with my little boat, um, with my very, very amateurish boating skills. Um, so I, to me, this is really important because it represents potentially a real redundancy with what's being discussed here. And I, I you know, I feel like I'm watching a, a, a two turtle race, right? I mean, who's gonna get to the finish line first? The county, <laughs> Uh, refurbishing the terminals or this project. I have no idea, but I think they're both on the decade timescale. Um, and, and I think we really need to think about whether we need both or we should be advocating for both. And then my third comment, which Chris has already really addressed, but you know, I'm a recreational boater. I have a boat, I keep it here. And I personally don't have any desire or need for a, a recreational dock. I use my boat to go elsewhere to to other islands where there are docks. Um, so I'm kind of am eh about it. Um, I, and as long as it's not gonna cost me some money uh, in terms of a, a tax levy, I'll still be eh about it. But I think I, I completely agree with Chris, this can't end up being another special levy on uh, our property taxes. I give very generously to the county as it is, especially after the last reassessment. So those are my three comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, now I'll mute myself. Very nice. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Hands up, wave at me. Looking on both screens here. No other comments. Wait a minute. I want to know who iPad 2 is. Oh, iPad 2, you care to yeah. identify yourself? <laughs> Hi, it's Liz. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah, hey. We, well, we tried to make ourselves visible, but for some reason it uh, wouldn't work. And so we've been iPad 2 all evening. I, I apologize. <laughs> no, no problem. I, just, I think that people should, you know, just, you know, I'm out there. Thanks for asking, though. <laughs> so I'm going to probably turn my my video off next time. But anyway, um, cool. Thanks so much. Anybody else with comments? Uh, I have one. OK, great. Go ahead. Yeah, one final want... comment, and that would be that I want to personally thank uh, the committee for putting together a wonderful presentation and putting on a town hall meeting like this. The kind of participation we've had tonight has been great. The comments, wonderful. Uh, bringing in stakeholders and others is just tremendous for the island as a whole. 
So on behalf of uh, the Leica board, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I have one thing. Uh, anybody that has um, experience, it has difficulty with Zoom in any way, um, we're more than happy to, happy to help you with that. Um, offline of this meeting, uh, there are ways to do things and fix the problems and make life easier for you. Uh, one is if you're muted and you hold down your space bar, it will automatically unmute you for the length of time you're holding down the space bar. Well, that's a new one for me. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. And, yeah, and I, I see another one here that I missed in, um, from Karen, and it's what can we do to help move this forward quickly? Um, Chris? <laughs> Yeah, we need we need letters either in support or you don't want it to happen. So we know where we're at with everybody. But if it is something that you support and you'd like to see happen and it's going to be a benefit to you, let us know how. I know uh, the, the county government will want to see uh, what kind of support is available on island, how it will benefit islanders, how it will help in our economic recovery on a, a larger scale. They're interested in that, how it's going to be beneficial to everybody in the community is what they're concerned with. And, and we want your input on that. You know, we're all sold on it. That's why we're doing it. But, you know, it's not just us. We're a community and we need everybody to, to contribute. So the fastest way is get us information as quick as you can. Yeah. Yeah, and P.S. Um, P.S. Mr. Davis, you are not. Uh, we have not forgotten you. You've done an excellent job promoting you and Alan promoting all of this. So uh, it's just not. Me. It's Paul handles the tone and Brown yep. Betty. Yep. I'm not just yep. me yep. when it comes to the website. Okay. Yep. yep. Mr. All right. Mr. Davis is my buddy. So. Yeah, if there's nothing else, um, we'll kind of like, I'm gonna go switch back and forth on screens, wave big at me if you have anything left to say. Uh, doesn't look like, oh, Paul has something to say. I think uh, the committee is doing a wonderful job and I wanna thank Chris for just an excellent presentation. I really like this project. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, and we will have this uh, video uh, posted on the website. Uh, the link to it will be available and we'll put out the link on uh, next door and Facebook and uh, but mostly we're trying to use the community website and we also are uh, have a a link on the community website if you want to get in touch with the members of the of the um, public doc committee uh, that will be that there's a link that will be um, on the packet that we're gonna uh, you can download right at the end of this meeting. Um, I'm, we're trying to just get the word out to as many people and as possible. And, uh, you know, I just thank everybody for showing up tonight and listening and thinking. And if you process things and you wanna write, uh, just send us a message uh, uh, via the community website and uh, we'll be sure it gets in the record. And well, I, Mary, Mary Moore, uh, mm -hmm. the, the tome is this week, and I, I wonder if the committee wants to put something in the tome. I have a deadline of Friday at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yep. If Chris we'll, has something, mm -hmm. we'll have something probably. Uh, Mary, I, I do have a question for Alan. Um, I know we have to put our email addresses in our phone numbers, which really annoys me in the, when we have to sign up, especially my phone number, when we have to sign up for a meeting. So is there a way to, 
we can get those emails back so that I can email the people that were at the meeting? No. No, we uh, don't hear sucks. them. Sorry, no, that, Alan, that sucks. Okay. Well, no, there was a reason for that. Not everybody wants everybody to have their email. Like we yeah, I don't want like, everybody to have my like email we, or my we, phone number. We we don't publish that information. That information is only there if we have to get with you quickly uh, to cancel a meeting or something like that. It is not for public dissemination. We're very sensitive to that. Yeah, well, I'm sensitive to it too. Okay, see you. Thanks. Okay. All right. Well, then I think uh, if there's if nothing else from the committee, no last words. Oh, okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Night off.